Hello, it's Erica here for Me To You Paper Crafts and today I'm coming to you with a Get Well card. Um, the flu and cold season is definitely well upon us. I have heard of a few people who have already been sick. My daughter included was away from work for three days. It was a horrendous cold and uh, I did my best to stay away from her so that I didn't catch the cold and luckily I did not and neither did my husband. But if I had been sick, it would have been nice to get a card in the mail to help cheer me up. So that's what we're going to make today. So I'm using the Harvest Hello stamp set. This I purchased from our holiday catalog, which is still current. And I had bought it for the fall season, particularly for the pumpkin. But then I realized this would be a great get well, because an apple a day keeps the doctor away, or so they say. And it does have a feel better soon um, greeting in here. It's also great for your kids teacher cards um, or anything else you can think of. A nice summer card just to say hello to someone it would be great. And this comes with the apple builder punch. So this punches out both an apple as well as the pumpkin. And it's got the little stem on it as well as a little leaf. So we're going to use this today to create a card. Now I often, uh, when I'm designing, end up uh, kind of setting aside pieces that don't end up on the card I'm actually designing. So, for example, I happen to um, I happen to have this uh, piece of crumb cake that I had embossed with this folder. This is called the basket weave folder. I've used this for tons of different projects. It's great for Easter baskets at Easter time. It's great for baskets during the summer. It's great for garden themed cards with lots of florals on it. So it's a great, um, it's a great embossing folder. Uh, so I had this and for whatever reason it didn't work with my design. I also had used some of this. This is the uh, one of our DSPs from the uh, holiday catalog called um, Toil Tidings. And I had um, cut this out as well as this piece of green and I don't know, ended up not using those either. Now to cut these out, I did use these. Um, these are called our um, stitched rectangle framelits. And what's fantastic about these is that they create automatic mats for your cards. So if you don't like cutting cardstock to create mats that are either an eighth or a quarter of an inch, um, in size, then you could just cut out some cardstock using these uh, these uh, layering rectangles. So those are a great set for your basic stamping supplies. So we're, I'm just going to put this card together as I go. I've got a piece of very vanilla here that is cut to four and a quarter by eleven, scored at five and a half, and I'm going to mount this on the top. The decision is, do I make up? portrait style card or do I make a landscape card? So I guess my intention would be to perhaps put the um, buffalo plaid at the bottom and maybe this green at the top and then build my apples. So before I finally decide that let's actually stamp an apple and uh, then we'll go from there. So because my base is very vanilla, and there's actually very vanilla in this DSP, I'm going to use very vanilla. I've got a drawer full of scraps here. I'm going to use very vanilla. Uh, now I've already mounted my stamps. They're right in front of me. So I'm going to take basic black, and I'm going to ink up the apple or the pumpkin stamp. And let's stamp this onto my card. Actually, what am I doing? I don't need it in very vanilla. Do you know why? I'm sure you do. Nope, this is why I have this piece of real red sitting here. This is for my apple. Yeah, don't know what I was thinking there. So let's start that again. I need a red apple. Now I'm going to show you a three-dimensional apple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this twice. There 
we go. So I'm going to stamp this twice and punch it out. This lines up quite easily on here. You do end up with a stem and a leaf at the same time, which we don't need because it's red. So we've got our two apples. Okay, now I, th I have a scrap of, this is um, early espresso, and um, I'm just going to punch out a leaf or an apple stem. I just need one of those. And um, I want to create some leaves, but I think I'll stamp the leaves first. Let's get rid of this. So I have a nice little a leaf here for the apple. And I'll stamp this in black again. We'll do two little leaves for the apple. Okay, and while we're at it, I think I'm going to put some leaves on top of this. Um, let me think. Let's not do that in black. Let's do this in Granny Apple Green. And let's just stamp some random leaves. Just to make a bit of a pattern. When you do this sort of thing, you want to rotate your stamp and you do want to stamp off the edges. It gives it a little bit more interest. If you don't want to rotate the actual stamp, just rotate your paper. And then you get your apples, or sorry, your uh, leaves in all of these random positions. I need something here. Maybe here. Okay, I think that's good. <clears throat> now, I'm going to show you what you do with this apple. We want to score down the middle, so let me pull out my scoreboard. I would love it if Stampin' Up! came out with a mini scoreboard. I know there are some on the market, but I'd like to have a Stampin' Up! one since I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So I'm just going to line this up and score this right down. Oh, this is my old... Um, sorry, that's my old um, stylus, and uh, I think the metal's the finish is rubbing off, so it's a bit rough. Let's get this one out. This is a much better one. Okay, we're gonna do that. Okay, then we're gonna bend those. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to glue one on top of the other and give it a bit of dimension. You could actually even do a third one, but this may be popped in the mail, so I don't want it to be too three-dimensional. Okay, so what I would do for this is I would take my Tombow and I would put a bead of Tombow. It's easier to put it in the valley here. Let's just put a little bead of Tombow in here. And there's a bit of a dry bit there. I should get rid of that. Or smush it down anyway. Here we go. Okay. And I'm going to stick this on top of that, like that. Just hold it for a couple of seconds, Tom, just so Tombo can get a bit sticky on there before it actually dries. And if you want to maintain 
the uh, shape of this apple, a trick is to take um, some dimensionals. So I'm just going to take, get out my pokey tool here, I'm going to take um, a couple of these small dimensionals. So if you don't want it to go to lie flat when you mail it, if you put a couple of dimensionals right near the spine in there, it will prevent it from flattening on top of that. Okay, so let's just take these off and then we can stick that down. Okay, so you can see how it won't flatten now because I've added those. So let me do the same to the other side. See it's flattened over there. So we definitely need those. And I'm just using the mini dimensionals. Put one there and then one here. Like that. And then flatten that. Okay. So there's your apple. It would kind of be interesting to see a third one on there. But I'll just do the two for now. Okay? All right. So now let's um, let's punch out our two leaves. When you have, I'm going to just point out a little trick. When you have builder punches, so builder punches are punches that Stampin Up designs that cuts out multiple images. So we've had these over the years. We've had a bird builder punch and we've had um, a butterfly punch and we've had balloons and we've had, uh, we had a little fox and an owl and they all those punches cut out multiple pieces to it. And so um, when you have smaller bits that you want to punch out, I always try and stamp on a narrow piece of cardstock so that I'm not cutting into a bigger piece of cardstock and wasting it. So see how this is narrow and it fits in quite nicely uh, to punch out that leaf. So that's a little tip for you if you didn't know that already. So I'm just lining that little leaf up in there. Okay. And um, the next thing I want to do is to, we're going to glue these. Oh, here's the other one went flying. These do go flying, so you want to watch for that. Let's put some tools away so I don't get too cluttered. So these, and yeah, see already um, I've lost the little stem. The little stem has kind of disappeared. Oh, did I find it? No, I might have to, I'll just cut another one. That happens. If you don't consciously set them aside somewhere, they're easy to lose. But I'll just punch another one. There is a stamp in the set that will stamp, let me show it to you, that will actually stamp the stem. But it's really tiny and a little bit fiddly for me, so I just uh, punch out a piece of brown. And um, now what's really um, easy to do for this is I'm just going to put some glue dots on the back of this. I want my pokey tool again. Here we go. And then I'll stick the leaves and the stem on the back. So I'll put three of these on here. Two. And three. Okay. I'll put the stem on first. And then I'll put the little leaves on. And another little leaf. And 
And there I have my little apple. Isn't it cute? It's so cute. I think it's so cute. Okay. Here's another little tip. I don't know if you've seen this either. Is if you tie a piece of ribbon um, around your um, your glue dot um, roll, it saves it from unraveling. I don't know if you've seen that, but it will it'll unravel and then it exposes a lot of glue dots and then they end up getting everywhere. I learned that the hard way. And this was a little tip. I want to say Connie Stewart. Many many years ago, I saw that tip from Connie Stewart, and I love it. And I show everybody else, including my team members, how to do that keeps it a little bit more neat and tidy. Okay, let's pull my card back into view. So, let's see what I might want to do here. I'm already thinking I want some ribbon on here. I think the apple looks good up there. And then we'll want a greeting at the bottom. So what am I going to do for the greeting? So I think I have the greeting out here, yes. Feel better soon. So again, I'll bring back very vanilla. Bring my black memento ink. We'll do feel better soon. And what better to punch this out with than these scallop circle punches? Now, where's my other scallop circle punch? I thought I had two on my desk. Oh, is this it? Yes. So I have a one and an eighth and a one and three eighths. These are our scallop circle punches and they are fantastic for layering any of our tiny greetings, small greetings. So I can pop this one out and then I'm going to layer it. Now let's see, what should I layer it on top of? If I'm going to put this down at the bottom, I don't want it layered on red. I might want to layer it on a piece of the green. And I don't have any green on my desk, so hang on. I'm just going to grab my scrap. So I have my eight and a half by eleven cardstock stored in um, some cardstock holders, like little drawers that I can pull out. And then when I to keep my scraps, I just put them in these. These are the um, sheet protectors that you can buy at any of your office supply stores. And I cut off the three hole, you know, the three hole, three holes to allow you to put them in a binder. I just cut that off, and then I keep all my scraps in here, and then I put it in the same slot with the paper. So that's how I organize my scraps and it works quite well for me. So let's punch this one out. There, isn't that sweet? Let's get rid of these two other scraps while I'm at it. Keep my desk a little bit more tidy than it usually is. Now, let me think about this. I think I might want... a bit of ribbon. So, let me think about this. I think I have some Granny Apple Green. Uh, this is, I believe, retired, this Granny Apple Green color. But we've got red, and this Granny Apple Green might be in another style of ribbon that you could look for in the catalog. Yeah, I think that'll look quite nice. So I am going to wrap this around. I just want it wrapped around these two pieces. So here's a trick. I'm going to put these together like this. And then I take some simple scotch tape. Yes, scotch tape is a crafting supply. So I have this cute little scotch tape holder. I use scotch tape quite a bit for holding my ribbon. I've used glue dots in the past and they sometimes will not hold very well. So I like to use scotch tape. So I'm just going to join that back. And then I'm going to, again, use scotch tape to hold down my ribbon. P place this over that 
center line like that and then we'll wrap it around the front and here's another tip if you want to hold that ribbon down on the cardstock so it doesn't lift up glue dots are very handy for that so I may want to put one glue dot there and wrap this around the front and stick that down and then wrap it to the back. And again, I'll use some tape like that. And then I'll pull up my ribbon scissors and voila, I have now wrapped my ribbon. And that glue dot ended up to be a little bit crooked. So lift it up and just place it down again. Perfect. Okay. So let's now mount this to, no, let's mount this to our cardstock. And I think I'm going to make this a tent fold card. So I'm going to do it this way. Um, I really prefer to use my Tombow liquid glue when I am sticking down embossed sheets of cardstock because it gets into the little holes or creases. So I prefer to use this Tombow. And remember my tip about lining this up with your grid paper? You can purchase this grid paper from Stampin' Up! comes on a paper pad it's really great and you just the little grid marks are quarter inch so if you just center this on the middle that's an eighth of an inch all the way around makes lining up your cards layers much easier for you so let's now so this is just plain paper so I can use my tape runner Now I'll place this on the card. I continuously check to make sure I know where my opening is because I have made a few backwards cards in my stamping career. And they become quite funny. Okay, so now we're ready to put our... Now I won't pop this up anymore. I think I'll just put a little bit of Tombow on the back of the apple. And uh, yeah, let's straddle it over the ribbon. So we'll hold this for a few seconds. So I'm hoping all of you have been healthy, that you haven't had a terrible cold or flu. But you know what? The season is, is a long one. <clears throat> People can get sick all the way up until May, I think. So um, wash your hands a lot. I'm not kidding you. When I go out and I'm out and about, I uh, wash my hands a lot. I keep um, disinfectant wipes in my car so that when I get back from the grocery store, I can wipe my hands. And I wash my vegetables and my fruit really well. Don't forget to do that. Okay, Dr. Erica is now out. And Erica the crafter is in. <laughs> All right, so let's finish this. I think I'm going to put a glue. No, not a glue. I'm going to put a Stampin' Dimensional. Where are they? I'm always throwing things around on my desk and not putting them away. Here they are. I've got a little bit of scrap here I want to use up for my scissors. Oh, I need my scissors. There we go. And let's take off a piece of this. And we'll put this on here. And then I'm going to grab a bit of Tombow. I'll put that on there. And then let's put a little feel better soon down here at the bottom.
so there you go there is a feel better soon card I think that's quite cute kind of brings a bit of a summery feel to it for that poor sick person so there you go a get well card for someone now I currently don't know anybody who is sick if you have been sick or you're not feeling well and you'd like me to send you this card then leave a comment below in either the YouTube video or on my blog and I will be more than happy to private message you get your address and send you this cute card hope you get better soon thanks for watching everyone bye for now